All right, so we have a Platinum League Terran versus Zerg. We're just going to quickly take a look at what happens in this game. All right, we're setting up camera hockey locations. Digging it. A little, a little fumbly on the first supply depot, but whatever. No big deal. SCV ready. I mean, seriously, Platinum League and we're using SCV camera ready. hockey locations? That's just deadly. I'm so excited by this. All right. Racks into gas. Yep. Perfect. Oh, look. Pro gamer move. Even rallies the SCV building the depot down to make a natural. Like, this is... Platinum League going ready. on like this low masters already like we got some big ambitions here. I dig it SCV ready. SCV ready. Speed it up SCV ready. Let's see everything honestly, I just want to pause it for a second and say honestly this is so, so impressive from uh, Platinum League. Like, everything is on time. Everything looks wicked. Really, it does. Oh, oh, what, 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 what are we doing? Oh, you know what? Let's not speculate. Let's go through your That's exact thought ready. process here. So we're looking. I love the fact that we're scouting too. We scouted at a good time. Oh, and it's one minute, 39 seconds, and we see that going down. So we we definitely know this is late. But from this bit of information, do we know if this is a cheese, if this is uh, super safe, if this is an all in? Do we know anything? No. What I would assume, because if it was going to be something super, super aggressive, especially in Zerg versus Terran, this hatchery would actually go down earlier for the most part. Um, versus Protoss versus Zerg when you're playing Zerg, it can be a little bit different, but versus Terran, yeah. What I would assume, uh, I mean, I pretty much know, it, this is just 17 pool first. Um, so, what did our Zerg opponent do? Yeah, it's just a 17 pool. Okay, so 17 pool can definitely be used for like an all-in or an aggressive play or whatever, but for the most part, just going 17 pool first is just a safety thing. It's You can do it in any matchup, it's always safe. So I absolutely respect this. We're going for the low ground, or sorry, the high ground command center. I dig it. We probably would have been fine, to be honest. We could have just kept re our Reaper at home because we're going to get a full scout with our SCV anyway. But it doesn't matter. I I absolutely respect it. Perfect. So what else are we going to see? Command center upgrade. So if you're ever... Here's a little pro tip. So if you're ever curious, like like I said, this is 17 pool. I, I don't know if you know that or not. Um, but if you're ever curious to see if this is like a 13, 12 or 17 pool... Click on the gas geyser, okay? So 2250 gas is what you start with. Like, how much does this guy mind? Enough. He's got a link speed, right? He's got 148 gas. But if this was a much earlier pool, especially at this time, this would not be 2000 anymore. This would be much lower. This would be 19 something, right? Because it's been mining for, you know, an extra 30 seconds to a minute. Because um, 1312, you literally, the first drone you make just gets rallied to a gas geyser. Um, 1312 is not really a thing versus Terran. Um, but, you know, if you're ever curious. But yeah, seeing this much gas, link speed hasn't even started yet because there's... It, it shouldn't be done by now, right? Um, and we don't see the spawning pool wiggling. We only see 148 gas mined out. Uh, I mean, this is Platinum League. Uh, these should be two pulled off by now, but whatever. But yeah, that's that's just a quick way to determine, hey, is this a safety, like, 17 pool, or is this, like, a fucking 12 pool? Command center upgrade complete. The Grim Reaper has arrived. Okay, so I can re also respect the Reaper staying at home, but... I think the uh, the bunker might be a little bit overkill, but at least it's just one, okay? Um, again, so I just don't think we we know that for a fact that this is just a simple 17 pool. Um, I still would like to see either the Reaper go across the map or this SCV stay at home, because the only big determination we need to make right now is 
is this a 17 pool for safety because he's afraid of you know proxy two racks or something or is this a 17 pool that's going to be followed up with like a very very fast like 19 supply roach warren so either this scv or this are uh, your reaper just needs to say somewhere across on the map if it's the reaper don't worry about getting a trying to get a single ling or drone kill don't worry about it at all we just need to poke in and make sure hey is there a fast roach warren going down um and that's it if there's no fast roach warren we don't have to worry about it this was just a 17 pool opening because he was most likely proxy two racks recently and didn't Ready. want to deal with that shenanigans so back at home everything we have is a little bit delayed but i can respect the fact that we think this is an aggressive play the most important thing to do and it's not just in starcraft but in life really right or wrong when you're faced with a situation you just have to make a decision and you have to go with it because even if you have an idea and it doesn't work out in the end it's always infinitely better to pick an idea pick a strategy or a response and go with it and inevitably fail than it would be to not do anything okay where we learn from our mistakes but we think we see something our response is, this is an aggressive play. And even though it's not correct, it doesn't matter. We're committing to that response. We don't want to half-ass anything, you know? And we, we have to make that decision. We make one. So I I absolutely respect this. Um, 17 pool does slow down the Zerg economy a little bit. Um, you're slowing your economy down. So, But look, like for all intents and purposes, you're pretty much, you're ahead a little bit, but that's also morals um but yeah no like everything is good at this point we respected our opponent so another good way to tell if this was like a 13 12 like super aggressive uh early pool is if it was like the three minute to four minute mark is when why well, i shouldn't even say the four minute mark because that's pretty late like the three minute mark is when or even earlier um, you're going to see lings flooding across the map. Like if it was truly 13-12, the first 10 lings that he's going to be making or a 12 pool are coming right across the map and they're hitting you way earlier than this. So the fact that it's three minutes and we haven't seen a ling or anything move our way, we're we're totally safe to land this. Um, if we're second thoughts, anything like that, we have 50 energy here. I would not hate, it's a bit early, but you know what, if it's worth it to scan if we don't 100 percent know right plus we're gonna have another orbital right away anyway um so he is going for a roach warren but contrary to what i said earlier this is not that early of a roach warren what i'm a little alarmed by is the fact that it's two gas no drones and no third so even with opening 17 pool you typically still get a third that's on time and on time is like two minutes 30 to three minutes um and he this is a big dead giveaway first off double gas in the main this early for a zerg player double gas in the main this early for a zerg player only means one of two things either this is like silver league or below or there's an aggressive play coming. Um, with the rule of one gas, how Zerg works for macros, if they're playing a macro style build, is they take their first gas geyser, after they get ling speed, they typically pull two drones out and they get 16 on minerals in the main, 16 on minerals in their natural, 16 on minerals at their third, and then they explode and they go two, three, four, five six gases all at once so yeah this is definitely an all-in play but it's not optimized from the zerg this is pretty kind of late this better be ready. okay so we're scouting around with the reaper again i dig it i think if i if i can read your mental state right now what it's telling me is hey I thought I knew something aggressive was coming. It's been a little while. What's going on? Let's double check. The Reaper sees a lack of a third. I'm going to back that up because I'm just, I'm very happy with this. I can see your thought process. So the Reaper comes up. Hey, wait a minute. There's no third. Immediately, what do you do? You queue up 
and you go look at the only other possible third. Yeah, hey, look, there's no third. Now our spidey senses are tingling. What are we getting at home? We still haven't landed our orbital, which is okay at this point, but we could have definitely landed it a little while ago. Okay, beautiful. Two base layer, two gases taken, and this is from your point of view. We see the roach worn. I have no idea why an Evo chamber is going down, like unless we're gonna be slow roach dropping, because he doesn't have overlord speed. This is all we need to do. Like this is already a big giveaway. Like I said, two gases in the main and an early, early layer. A typical layer time for a Zerg playing a macro game is like 435 minutes. Um, all we need to do, if we can get down here and see the lack of drones. Oh, he did. I guess I fast forwarded a bit much. But even still, seeing this, these two gases, it'd be mission complete, right? We, we already know that, hey, there's some funny business going on. Like there's shenanigans afoot. All right. We have a cyclone. Complete. What do we have for production right now? Four minutes in, and we have a single Rax who have one, one, one. And while I am infinitely okay with this right now, if we think there's an aggressive play afoot, considering we still haven't landed our natural or anything like that, we need to either be constantly pumping out units, but we can get more production here. We could get a second racks. Like we're floating a bit of money. We could absolutely like, hey, look, we are floating money. And even without getting additional production right now, we're not utilizing everything we have. I'd love to see a Banshee right now, because if this is Roaches, because that's what we saw, like one Banshee can save the day and one Banshee, if it's not Roaches, isn't an overkill. Like it's not a big commitment. We don't have anything queued up here. Like we could just, if we truly think this is an aggressive play, let's, let's commit all the way. So we have a tank coming go, out. Go. All right, migrating. I mean, sure, you can salvage. This seems a bit early if we still think this is aggressive. If I'm reading your body language properly now, like your game state, this is more telling me like, hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you're second guessing yourself by salvaging this. Um, well, let's take a look at what the Zerg's got going on on their side of the map, okay? So we've got two upgrades, two Evos, but both queued on the same Evo. So that's a win for us. We've got two base Hydralisk going into Spire. Um, this Zerg is all over the place. They opened up super safe, then shot themselves in the foot and didn't drone forever and made this look like a really weird aggressive play, then swapped it back up and droned like crazy, but is still on only 43 drones at the five minute mark on two bases, not fully saturated, and is choosing every available tech path for gas. And what do they have for an army right now? Two queens. Like this is, this Zerg is playing bad single player. This is like a campaign player going through for the first time. So we're under literally zero threat right now. I love the Banshee. I'm so happy to see that. Do we have Cloak on the way? We don't. But that's okay. I, I Honestly, if we think it's Roaches, this is... There we go. We're finally getting some more production going down. Okay. So, pat on the back. Took a little bit longer than I would have liked, but for Platinum, that was still relatively quick. We made a decision early on that this was an aggressive play. We bunkered down, we got ready, nothing came. We scouted. We saw some weird stuff with our scouts, so we bunkered down again and we made sure we were ready. And then it didn't come. And now we're finally saying, okay, clearly this is not an all in anytime soon. Now, we still don't have a ton of information to like prove that, but we the lack of seeing any, oh my God, the lack of seeing any units, any aggression, anything out of the Zerg, we're, yeah, we're in a solid position. 
So we're finally starting to macro up. Our third's late, but better late than never. Mineral field depleted. Look at that. We're even reusing attachments. Fantastic work. Harassing with that cyclone. No response. That should have been a little bit weird. The fact that he just did not care. Right? What does he have for units? Did he even have anything? Or did that cyclone like literally force out units? Okay, he had... Oh, okay, he did have units. So what happens? Okay, so the cyclone gets chased away. Ignore what I just said. I'm sorry. So that is a weird sight to see, I will just say. Seeing, hey, look, I've got one cyclone. Let's just see what's going on. It's not a unit that you're going to really need right now anyway. So I'm fine with you throwing it away to scout. Oh, I'm so sorry. But to see a bunch of roaches, hydralisks, and mutalisks coming at you, like this zerg right now literally has zero. Like he's so good at spending his money now that he's making units. He's got nothing, but he's also supply capped. And what do we have in production? Seven overlords. That's where his money went. Oh my God. He's not good at spending his money. He just spent it. Um, do we still have multiple upgrades? Q to oh, he fixed it. All right. So this is, uh, look at this. All of his gas is queued up, but it's not doing anything. Like that's 150 gas sitting idle. We've got a lurker den. Like, uh, what? Why? Okay. Complete. The only thing that sucks is our upgrades are incredibly late, and like, one one is one thing, but like, we don't even have stim or combat shield in production, and it's seven minutes. So even under aggression, as I was saying earlier, we could have thrown down that second rax. We could have started stim a couple minutes ago. It should have already been done. So this is a big detriment. Like, very, very big. I hope we're not looking to move out. Okay, we finally do have Stim going. Thank God. All right, tanks don't like... So, we already see the roaches. Um, honestly, three Ravagers with Corrosive Bile right in the middle there would kill all three of those tanks. So, split them up a little bit. They don't have to be miles apart, but they can't be touching each other like that. SCV ready. We could use some help here. Okay. So now we get our first vision of the workers. But what do we have? So we've got turrets going up. All right. Very, very safe. Um, we've got a turret there. So what do we have that's going to deal with these lurkers? First off, Thor's... I mean... They don't do terrible versus lurkers, but they're not the unit you want. We already have the factory. We already have these tanks. This is our best counter right now second up is going to be the liberator so we could get a lib but there's also a lot of hydralisks so right and mutalisk so we could also just focus i would just purely focus on tank production right now because we only have four lurkers and they're pretty balled up if we can keep vision by getting either a raven getting some missile turrets i'm sorry we can constantly keep shelling these lurkers away and they'll never be able to take us. The only problem is that's going to keep us on two bases for a little while, which is not something we really want to be on. I do want to give you another pat on the back here. Stim's not done. We see this weird siege up position. We've scanned. We confirm there's still, still units here. We still haven't overcommitted. We still haven't pulled the trigger because we do not need to. We are not ready for a fight. We don't want the fight. We're just delaying it. We're pushing them back, keeping them at bay. That's trigger discipline. I'm so happy to see that. Ready for we have idle SCVs, but honestly, this big game's been a little bit chaotic. We got stuff going on right now. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna rip you for that. Game Let's see. How much energy do we have? So we've kind of been saving up energy. We've only got one scan available right now, though, so... Gotta be careful. Oh my goodness. Okay. Big brain plays right there. Lauren. Awesome. Okay. We took two Marines. We could have done the same with one, but it doesn't matter. We didn't move them all out. We took a couple. We took two Marines. 
confirm the presence since we only have one scan right now that hey look the lurkers are still there mineral field depleted now we can scan and for sure kill them with our banshees rather than wasting the scan is that what we're gonna do yeah uh oh uh oh no no okay we're moving the tanks our marines are on hold position this is pro gamer central awesome look at that Look at the losses right now. That's incredible. Research complete. You want a piece of me, boy? Again, remember, this is Platinum League, so like this this is impressive stuff, really. Look at that. The lur the the, <laughs> the lurg. The Zerg actually came in kinda of from two angles. Now if I look at the, yeah, no, this wasn't intentional. This was just where his units were. But how do we respond? The Biles, he's not targeting the tanks. We dodge every freaking Bile thrown at us. Way to go. Upgrade. Even Upgrade. dropping supply. In the heat of a battle, we recognized, hey, look, I'm supply blocked. And we fixed it. The multitasking. Look look at our APM right now. 173. Way to go, Lauren. Alright. Armed and ready. Let's have a blast. And I should have pointed this out earlier, but nice hockey setup. We've got Banshees and tanks on separate hockeys. That's really cool to me. We've got our main army hockey clearly on three. We have all of our production on four. All of our orbitals lined up and upgrades. Seriously, shooting for the stars. This is all impressive stuff for Platt. Like, really, it is. I would love to see a repair on that tank. Look at this poor guy. He's begging to be repaired for health. It only costs... So to repair a unit for Terran, it costs 25% of that unit's base price. So whatever a tank is, yeah, it's 150, 125. So it would cost... Uh, they say never do math on stream. Uh, 35? 30-something? 30 it would cost you 30-something minerals. <laughs> <laughs> and 30 uh, 20 something gas to repair that to full i i suck at math i'm sorry but yeah it's 25 percent of whatever the base price is so it would not cost that much to repair it it's Gangway. almost always Come worthwhile on. to repair a unit you want a piece of me boy this better be good okay. so we're staying at home while we're dancing back and forth with our army, let's keep in mind that we are way ahead. But how will we know that? It's kind of difficult to tell. So we don't have, we have one out of energy for one scan. One scan, one scan. I can respect us saving up a scan or two for the lurker play. But if we're that concerned, remember, we can always get a raven. Um, especially since if you're worried about it overriding stim or something like that, we were already pretty comfortable on using separate control groups. So awesome we can just throw it in with the banshees um but it's kind of difficult we haven't scouted in a little while we don't really know what's coming our way now we're going for the best middle of the road we've got a ghost uh academy on the way which is awesome i love to see it but we are 11 minutes into the game we're establishing our third everything's going hunky dory for us if we look at our losses like we're we're doing fantastic in the game what are we lacking on other than supply, which I'm pretty sure, yeah, we've got 10 depots on the way. Um, production. So there's kind of a general rule of thumb when we're playing a macro style of Terran versus really any race. Now, it can always change, but this is just like a cookie cutter way to look at it. When we're on one base, if we're playing a standard macro game, we can stay on one racks reduction. We can go one, one, one. Obviously, if we think there's something aggressive, we can throw it on the second racks. But again, this is cookie cutter for a standard situation. One base, one rack, so we can go one, one, one. When our natural finishes, we typically want to throw down two more racks, so we go up to three. And then when we get our third going, we throw up two more racks, if we're playing bio, to go up to five. And then once we pretty much have our third established, fourths on the way, we can either go up to seven or to eight racks. 
we just need to have much much more production so we're three short we still also it's been probably a minute or more now oh it's probably been three minutes close to now since stim's done we still don't have combat shields or concussive shells on the way um don't really like that especially because we have 10 marauders too and concussive shells just does not take that long combat shield's a massive one though that's a big miss and an easy way to remember if you forgot it look at your marines so when they get combat shield they'll actually start carrying a shield you'll it's a very noticeable thing once you see it so it'd be a pretty dead giveaway if you know what it really looks like to see these marines I'm like shit i don't have combat shield armed and ready okay so he's just being annoying Oh, we're gonna lose some units, aren't we? Did we even lose? Okay, we lost a little bit. Okay, we got a counter drop, though. Alright. And we're gonna snipe the hatch. Let's go, Lauren. We can throw away these Marines. Oh, can we even save them? Oh, boost, 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 boost! Oh. Whatever, we got a hatch. That was worth it. Depleted. Upgrade. Like, we're so far ahead in this game. Mineral field. We can use some help here. This Zerg is like he just can't commit. Oh my god, he's not like he's got everything that costs gas, but now he doesn't have any really upgrades. He's got lurker play, and he's going for broodlord, but he doesn't have any investors to support his broodlord, so he's going a bunch of vipers, which the are really realistically used to blinding clown to abduct the tanks, but that's kind of what the broodlords are for. This like this is good. just Ugh. So we're not here to criticize the Zerg. Oh my god, did we just snipe the Broods that easy? Oh my good lord. Let's go. Look at the losses now. Easy peasy, let's clean this up. Army supply, 137 to 77. Look at the supply. So I guess I should just point out, I like the fact that we didn't break these rocks. Um, Zerg always wants to break down the rocks because they want to have as much surface area as possible. Terran versus Zerg, it's kind of the opposite. They want to create a choke. So we didn't break these. We could have actually sieged our tanks a couple down here and just constantly create a choke so that it's almost impossible for the Zerg to engage. But it doesn't matter at this point. It really doesn't. We're so far ahead. Like, he's blinding cloud. Like, yeah, cool. That's a decent blinding cloud, except he's got no units, nothing that can take this fight. So, yeah. This is just, yeah. This is a stun. Quick scan, quick scan! Oh, okay, oh, whatever. We've got the units. Okay. When I say, oh, whatever, I love this. We split most of our units up here. We even control clicked some marauders, seized up our tanks immediately, scanned. Our control is quite freaking good for Platinum League. Like, we are on our game. Mineral field depleted. Research complete. Yeah. You're, you're too big to play. Drop a bunch of mana mules. Vipers get sniped. Oh, the Zerg is just knocking a GG. Is he gonna make you kill all of his structures? What is he looking at? Alright. So at the end of the game, we were 20,000 resources more efficient than our opponent. That was fantastic. Things to work on? Follow-up scouting. I could really see where your head was in the game, and it was evident by your play. Your play was... Again, might not have been the perfect response, but I have to give you credit for picking a route and just going down it, committing. Um, the initial response was a response, and it was good. Uh, the follow-up response, when we got a little, we had that sigh of relief. We initially thought, shit, aggression. Then we had that sigh of relief. Then we kind of went back into, okay, this is aggression again. The only thing I really wanted to see then was more production and we definitely limited ourselves there uh key upgrades stim combat we still don't have combat shield so upgrades are going to be a big deal we definitely have to get those going stim and combat shield are infinitely more important than one one so we we definitely need to get those going 
uh, still more production. Like we're still on how many racks is we're still on four. Once we're like three base saturation, seven to eight racks is we need more production. Um, if we're going to play tank heavy like we were versus lurkers, we can always get a second factory too. So we can just double double tank production. Um, as well as we did get tank upgrades, didn't we? Yeah. So we've got three, three and plus two tank weapons. Um, still no combat shield. But yeah, we definitely, we definitely did some very solid plays. Our control was really really good i can't give you anything uh for that your control groups are awesome you're using them everything looks fantastic uh i think it's just we gotta follow up we gotta scout a little bit more often especially if we're curious Terran has the best advantage in the game for that if you're ever curious where you're at in a moment's notice you can scan utilize it not every 50 energy has to be a mule so Good luck, have fun, I hope this helped a lot, and uh, yeah, take care.